Hi, today we're going to be doing a soldering tutorial for through-hole components on the PCBs I recently had made at JLC PCB. Right, so before you start soldering you just want to make sure that your tip's nice and clean, that you're able to tin it properly, and then just give it a wipe before you start soldering. So the basic process for soldering through-hole parts is simply to bring the soldering iron to the pad and the lead that you're trying to solder, and then flow some solder into the joint and then you'll see it solidify and leave a nice shiny joint. And then here it is from a slightly different angle, so heating up the joint, applying some solder, and then allowing it to solidify. And here you can see it from the top side of the PCB and the solder managed to make it the whole way through the barrel. In this example we have what would be classed as a defect, so basically not enough solder has been applied here, and we haven't got solder coverage on at least 270 degrees worth of the pad and the barrel. So to rectify this, all you need to do is reheat the joint and add some more solder to reflow the entire joint. On a through-hole plated board, it's perfectly acceptable to solder from either side of the PCB. So here we have an example of soldering a resistor from the top side of the board. So here you can see we managed good coverage of the pad and the component leg and we have an acceptable shape solder fillet. And then here we have an example of two resistors, the one on the left with the correct amount of solder and then the one on the right with the minimal amount of solder which just about achieves an acceptable amount of solder through the barrel so you can see it achieved at least 50% through the plated through hole. For things like dip packages you should be able to get a rhythm going and just heating up the leg and the pad and applying a small amount of solder each time. And here you can see we got the target shape for the solder fillet between the leg and the pad on the PCB. And then here we have a close up of soldering the legs from a dip package. In this example we have a 5mm RGB LED and what we're going to try and do is create a solder bridge between the legs of the LEDs. I'm using multi-core solder and actually because it's a very good solder and has good flux in it, it's surprisingly difficult to bridge across the pads. If you're using a much cheaper solder with worse flux it's more likely that you're going to be able to get this to occur. So the easiest way to rectify this is to simply put a bit of flux across the legs and then use some solder wick to wick away the excess solder and then you can just touch up the joint again with a bit of new solder uh, just to tidy everything back up. And here we have the same situation on a ceramic capacitor and depending on the solder wick that you're using it may or may not already have impregnated flux in it but there's no harm in adding additional flux to the PCB. Here we have an example of how not to solder a component onto a PCB and that is to apply the solder to the tip and then try and solder the component onto the board and what happens is the flux basically burns off and then the solder will no longer wet onto the pad or the component leg. So to rectify this, simply you can just add some more flux to the board and then reflow the solder joint. Alternatively, you can just add some more solder to the joint and it should have enough flux in there to reflow the joint acceptably. And here we basically have the same situation again where playing with the solder joint with your soldering iron has burnt off all of the flux and then the solder no longer forms a shiny joint. So all that you need to do again to rectify this is either apply a bit more solder to the joint or to apply some flux and reflow the entire joint. So hopefully you found that video useful. The process for soldering through hole parts is pretty straightforward so the video is quite short and to the point. In the next video we're going to be having a look at some different types of solder to see how they compare when soldering the same parts on the PCB and then following on from that we're going to be looking at doing some surface mount soldering. So I hope you enjoyed the video and until next time thanks for watching.